Hi, in this video, we'll be talking about number systems. You may notice the voice in this video is different from the others. That's because this is a guest lecture. My name is Calvin, and I'll be taking you through number systems. So what is a number system? Well, a number system defines how we represent our numbers. It tells us which digits we're allowed to use and what each position or place in a number means. You'll see what I mean by this in a little, in a little bit. For example, let's take the decimal number system. So the decimal number system is the number system that we use in our everyday lives, and it has 10 digits, 0 through 9. Now you're probably already comfortable making numbers in the decimal number system. We have 10 fingers, 10 toes, it's very easy for us to think in terms of 10. But this is not the only number system. It turns out we can also represent numbers using only two digits. And that's the binary number system. So the binary number system has a base of two, only two digits, 0 and 1. And this is how computers represent numbers at the very base level, using only zeros and ones. And we'll see how this is possible in a minute. But first we need to recognize that all number systems work exactly the same. Decimal and binary, in the way that they represent numbers, work the exact same way. They just have a different number base. So to see what I mean by number base, let's look at the decimal number system. So the decimal number system has a base of 10. That means that we have 10 digits to work with. We can use 0 through 9. So let's try to represent some numbers using only these digits. Well, let's start at zero and count up. We can represent zero. We can do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But now we have to represent 10. How are we gonna get to 10? We don't have a symbol for that. We don't have a digit that we can use to represent 10. So what do we do? We push the nine over to the side, we put a one in front of it, and then we set everything after it to zero with the understanding that this new place to the left is worth 10 times as much as the previous. We now have the ones place and the tens place. Cool, so now we can represent 10, and we can keep counting upwards. What happens when we get to 99? Now we're out of digits again. How are we gonna represent 100? Well, just like last time, we'll put a one in front of it and set everything after it to zero with the understanding that this new place is actually worth 100. We now have the ones place, the tens place, and the hundreds place. If you think about it, we can do any number this way. We can have a set of digits between 0 and 9, and each place is going to represent a different value. We're going to have the ones place, the tens place, the hundreds place, thousands, and so on. And really, each place is worth 10 times more than the previous. From 1 to 10, we multiply by 10. To get to 100, we multiply it by 10. And to get to 1,000, we multiply by 10. So in other words, this is 1, this is 10, this is 10 times 10, this is 10 times 10 times 10. If we think about this in terms of exponents, we see that this is actually 10 to the 0, 10 to the 1, 10 to the 2, 10 to the 3, and so on. All we have to do is start from 0 and count upwards on the exponents. So this is where we get the phrase base 10 from. The base of all of these exponents is 10. So to get the number from this string of digits, all we have to do is look at how many groups of each of these places we have. We have 6 groups of 1,000, 9 groups of 100, 3 groups of 10, and 2 groups of 1. We have 6,000, 900, a 30, and a 2. And when we put that all together, we have 6,932. So that's how the decimal system is working. What about the binary number system? Now we only have two digits, 0 and 1. How are we going to represent all these numbers using only 0 and 1? Well, let's try counting up, just like last time. We can do 0, we can do 1. Now we have to do 2, and we don't have a symbol for that. So, just like in the decimal system, we'll scoot that one over, put a 1 in front, and set everything after it to zero with the understanding that this is actually worth twice as much as the previous. We now have the ones place and the twos place. So in binary, one zero doesn't mean 10. One zero means two. Let's keep counting. Go up one more, and now we have three. Now we have to get to four. Well, just like when we went from 99 to 100, we'll just put a one in front and set everything after it to zero with the understanding that this new place is worth twice as much as the previous. So this is the fours place. So 1, 0, 0 now means 4. Just like in the decimal system, we see that we're multiplying by the base every single time to get to the new spot. 1 times 2 is 2, times 2 again to get 4. See that this is the 1's place, the 2's place, and the 2 times 2's place. Or 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, and 2 squared. Again, we have a base of 2. The base of all these exponents is 2. So let's see what this looks like with a bigger number. Now we have 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. What number could that possibly represent? Well, all we have to do is lay out all of those digits and put the value of their place below them. So this is the ones place, double it to get two, double it to get four. Let's see if you can do the rest in your head. 
So from here we would get the 8's place, the 16's place, the 32's place, the 64's place, and the 128's place. We have 2 to the 0 all the way up to 2 to the 7. So to get the decimal value of this number, all we have to do is add up the value at each of these places. We have one group of 128, we have no groups of 64, 0 32's, 1 16, 0 8's, 0 4's, 0 2's, and a single 1. So really we see that to get the decimal value, we really only have to look at the digits that have a 1. All the zeros aren't going to contribute to the final result. So let's just look at the 1's. This number has 1, 2 to the 7, 1, 2 to the 4, and 1, 2 to the 0. We have 128 plus 16 plus 1. 128 from this, from this 1, 16 from this 1, and 1 from that one. When we add all these together, we get 145. So we see that this binary number is actually equal to 145. Now what's interesting is we can have a number system with any base. For example, the octal number system has a base of 8. That means we have 8 different digits that we can use, 0 through 7. So let's do the same thing we've been doing with decimal and binary to see what 5712 in base 8 actually is in decimal. So we'll lay out all the digits and put the value of the place underneath each digit. The far right, we're going to have 8 to the 0, then 8 to the 1, which is 8, 8 squared, which is 64, and 8 cubed, which is 512. We see again that the base of all these exponents is 8. It is the base 8 numbering system. So to get the decimal value, we just have to multiply each digit by the value of that place. We have five groups of 8 to the third, seven groups of 8 squared, one group of 8, and two groups of 8 to the 0. So we have 5 times 512, 7 times 64, 1 times 8, and 2 times 1 to get this value here, 3,018. So 5712 base 8 is actually 3,018 in base 10 starting to get the hang of it. We can actually see that no matter the number base, we can always convert back to decimal. And there's one more number system that's really important to computers, and that is the hexadecimal number system. This actually has 16 digits that we can use. So we see, just like in decimal, we can use the digits 0 through 9, but that's only 10 digits. What about those last six? What, what symbols could we use to represent those last six digits? Well, by convention, we use A through F. A really represents 10, B is 11, all the way up to F, which is 15. But these are single digits in the hexadecimal numbering system. So let's look at an example. 43F is a single number in hexadecimal. Let's see what 43F is in binary. We'll lay out all the digits, put the value of each place below it. So this is the 16's, this is the 1's place, 16 to the 0. This is the 16's place, 16 to the 1st. And this is the 256th place, or 16 squared. So to get the value, we multiply each digit by the value of its place. We have 4 times 16 squared, 3 times 16, and f times 16 to the 0. So that really means 4 times 256 plus 3 times 16 plus 15 times 1 to get a final value of 1,087. So 43f in hexadecimal is 1,087 in base 10. So these are all the number bases that we should be familiar with. We know the decimal numbering system, that's base 10, and we can use the digits 0 through 9. Then there's binary, which is base 2, and that uses the digits 0 and 1. Octal is base 8, digits 0 through 7, and hexadecimal is base 16, using digits 0 through f. Let's explore number systems in the editor. So in this example, we're going to use our knowledge of number systems to convert a given octal value into the corresponding decimal value. So what we're doing is we're going to read an input from the user, it's going to be an octal string. It'll only hold digits three, 0 through 7. And we're going to write a method, octal to decimal, that takes in an octal string and returns the decimal value. So this is the method we need to implement. So looking here, the way we need to do this is we need to look at every digit in the string, multiply it by its corresponding place value, and add them all together to get the decimal result. So let's make a plan of how we're going to implement this method. First, we need to know the value of each place. We need to know, going left to right, what the highest exponent is going to be. So calculate the starting exponent, the far left. Then we need to loop over the string and calculate a value at each index and add it to the decimal result. So loop over the octal string and calculate the value of each index 
add this to the decimal result. So inside this loop, first let's calculate the uh, current place value. So that's going to be this. It's going to start off as 64, 8, then 1, going from left to right. So this is really just going to be 8 raised to the current exponent. Then we need to calculate the current digit value. So in this example, that would first be 3, then 0, then 7. Then we need to add digit value times place value to the decimal result. And we will update the exponent value, the current exponent, for the next iteration. The loop will be going from left to right over the string. We need our exponent to be going down as we iterate through. So at the end of this loop, we should have built up our decimal result. So let's go ahead and return the decimal result. Great, so this is our plan. If we implement each of these steps, this program should work. So let's calculate the starting exponent. What is the first exponent in the string? Well, we see that if our string is three characters long, we're gonna start off with an exponent of two. If it's only one character long, we're gonna start off with an exponent of zero. So really, the current exponent, the starting exponent, is the length of the string minus one. So current exponent is going to be the octal string dot length minus one. Um, let's also keep a running total for the decimal result. It's going to start off as zero. Now we want to loop over the string from left to right. So for int i equals zero, i is less than octal string dot length i plus plus. And we want to do all of this. So at each index of this string, we need to calculate the place value, the decimal, and the digit value and multiply them together. So the current place value is really going to be 8 raised to whatever the current exponent is. So place value is equal to math.pow 8 raised to the current exponent. And this returns a double, so let's cast it to an int. Now we want to calculate the current digit value. So for example, if we're at this index, the digit value would be 0. Here it would be 7. So let's first get the character, current digit. That is going to be the character at, it's going to be octal string dot char at i. Now how can we go from the character 3 to the number 3, or the character 7 to the number 7? Well, it turns out the character class is a really nice method to help us do this. It's called character dot get numeric value. We pass it the digit, the character, and let's store that in uh, an int called digit value. So now all we have to do is multiply these two together and add that to the decimal result for this index. So decimal result plus equals place value times digit value. Great and update current exponent for the next iteration. When we loop to the next index, we should have an exponent of one less than the current. So current exponent minus minus. And at the end of this loop, we should have our decimal result. So let's return it. Let's see how this works. Let's try this one. If we input 307, 199, great. Let's try 10, that should be eight. Wonderful. So this is how we can convert from octal to decimal.